And so let's see. So we got a bunch of stuff to practice, right? We got a bunch of tunes that we learned that I can think of uh, Banish Misfortune. I can think of, well, what else? Can somebody remind me? I have a terrible memory for tunes. Lark in the Morning. Yes. Okay. We worked on Earl of Dalhousie. Oh, lovely. That's great. Okay. Well, why don't we start with the jigs? And let's do the two of them. Let's do Banish Misfortune followed by uh, uh, Lark in the Morning. Now, that's a big piping one, that Lark in the Morning. That's what well, pipers play that tune a lot. It's kind of made for the pipes. I'm gonna, probably going to be talking a lot about pipes tonight. I love the pipes and I, and it's I love I look forward to the Chris Langan weekend every year. I couldn't go to the Piper's chair today or uh, this year. Uh but apparently it was great. There was like seven pipers there. It's pretty cool. Might be a bit much for some people. <laughs> Bag pipes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I'll admit, I haven't played these tunes for uh, probably about a month because uh, le left my own, you know, whatever's. I'll I'll work on um, I'll work on Cape Breton music, you know, which which is oh. what I was doing. I was working on the Cape Breton stuff. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, yeah this this stuff I haven't looked at for a while, so it's probably going to be pretty rough. But, it's okay, we'll uh, go slow. Let's anyway, be into it. And let's practice. Uh, let's practice a good D major today in honor of the Illin pipes and the fact that Lark in the Morning is in D. Uh, let's do a good D major scale on our arpeggios, and maybe we'll even do some double stops in that key as well. I'm gonna put my tuner on. Yeah, your your sound uh, sounds awful. <laughs> there we go. fancy rosin on the weekend too for my friend Julie and I do like it I gotta say it's French and expensive <laughs> okay so we're gonna do D major scale octave and a half let's do it ready go
good. Mine wasn't just as good. I got my C sharp was a little sharp for a second there, just for a second. How about you guys? You feeling okay in the key of D? Okay. Yeah. Let's do some double stops. Well, actually, let's go a bit quicker with it. So we just practiced it with the with the ear. This time, I want you to go a bit quicker and give me your kind of uh, uh, assessment of how you did. Uh, uh, with the quicker because when you go a little bit quicker you don't always have time to tune so you're gonna have a good idea of where your fingers normally come down on our first try okay let's see if we can get a sense of that so a little bit quicker okay ready two three go perfect game how did you guys do start with you david how'd you do i guess i bowled perfect game too because <laughs> it sounded pretty good to me oh from that's great tell with my, from my 74 year old years <laughs> well you know there is something to listen for when you're flat it sounds depressed and when you're sharp it sounds edgy and it hurts your ear uh, so you can listen for that type of thing, but I'm glad to hear it went well. That's really good. How about you? Uh, um, hmm? Yeah, it shouldn't be shouldn't shouldn't be too bad. The puppy's been getting us up at seven o'clock, so uh, you know we might be a little tired, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how about Susan? How'd you do? Yeah, pretty good. Okay. How about you, Lisa? How do you think you did? I was getting confused on the arpeggio because I keep thinking we're going to do the two octave D with the shift. And so I was like, but it was okay t tune wise, like intonation wise, but you know. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Glad to hear that. How about you, Paul? Yeah, all good. Yeah. Well, I also got confused with the fingering, but not, not really in terms of getting a, just Intuitive. getting the second finger, I think on A, I, I just did a, I was thinking, I thought I was playing G. I don't know. I was like, oh, wait a second, I'm playing G. <laughs> you know. It happens. Let's do so it again. I think Same speed. Fun. Yeah. Okay. Same speed. A one, two, three, go. Still good? Mm -hmm. Good. Now, double stops in the key of D. So we got this one. And then we got this one. And then this one. And then this one again. And then an octave. And then a third. And then the big challenge, the fifth. Okay, and then we come back down kind of the same way. See that? Now there are many arpeggio, or sorry, uh, double stops you can do in the key of D. Many, many. But those are the ones that involve the arpeggio notes. And they're a really good place to start when you're working on arpeggios. Er, or sorry, double stops. Any two arpeggio notes can be played together and it makes a harmonious double stop. Any of them. Uh, so you can basically just kind of do the, what we just did there. On two strings. Oh, and you can do an octave up there if the fifth is really sour. But a fifth is great. And it, but it is hard to get in tune. For most people, they got to twist their fingers slightly to get that in tune. Anyway, and it's a really good skill to have because uh, uh, tunes that involve 
rocking back and forth with your third finger. <laughs> See, that's really useful. That's all I do is just put that finger down. See that? So anyway, good thing to practice. So let's give it a go. So we start with G1 open D. That's a fourth. Let's do, let's do two bows for each, each uh, double stop. Okay? Ready? Go. Now open A, open D. Now F sharp and open A. And then the opens again. And then we'll do an octave. And we'll do a third. That's A3 and E1. Now we're going to do the fifth. And then we'll do the third again. And then we'll do the octave again. And then the opens. The third. Opens again. down to the G1. Okay, everybody understand how to do that exercise? I mean, it's only an example. Like I said, there's so many that you can do, but everybody understand the plan? Yes. Is there a notation for that somewhere? Or is there I think there is. I'm going to check now. D... Major double stoppies. Yes, I will send it to you now, Lisa. Oh, right, you're LA. There we go. Felcha. Nice. Okay, so I sent that to you. Uh, oh yeah, I have to address my bow because it is my E string is sounding a little funny, so I'm going to have to put some rosin on it. And the other thing is, check out, I've had a very heavy week of playing, and the weekend especially, and check out my hair. It is very dirty, it is very clumped, see that? And so I have somewhere a fine tooth comb, but my little girl steals it on me all the time. And it seems that she has stolen it yet again. But I have a fine tooth comb. And sometimes, once in a while, I have to kind of comb out the clumps. Because it's, and it's only my own fault because I touch the hair while I play. Like, I, my hand goes right around the hair and everything, unfortunately. And it's really a problem because when you get those clumps, it's a recipe for squeaks and whistles. Because, especially if you bring your hand up off the fiddle and come down like that, the clumps hit the string first. And, uh, and you don't, you don't uh, expect it. And so you get this uneven kind of attack. To, it's really annoying. Uh, so anyway, so I'm going to try to fix it just by putting some new clean rosin on it for now. And I'll have to comb it out. And this is the best rehair I've ever had. And I'm so scared to get a new one. But I might have to. This thing has done a lot of eighth notes. Where did you, uh, where'd you have your rehair done? Uh, Heinel here in Toronto. It's, it's my favorite place oh, here Heinel. in Toronto, George Heinel. The, the guy that does the bows, uh, he studied in England for seven years. He's well known all over the world. And, uh, not only that, he plays Irish flute. <laughs> so he understands. It actually helps because he understands to some extent. Like, he, he rehairs my buddy Brian's bow and Brian's from Slago. And he says, oh, he's going to need that a little bit slack to, play, to hit the wood. Because that's, that's the way the flute and fiddle tradition is in Slago. And so he really did a great job of that. And, and, and he's a great guy. He's a really nice guy. Okay, I got a, I got a question about uh, Heinel and vocal yeah. rehairs. Um, you know where I am. I'm down in yes. Leamington. 
Um, okay. Heinel is a long way away. It's like four hours away from here. Um, now I can drive to Toronto, okay, and leave the bow with them to get a rehair because I haven't had a rehair for a long time, at least five years, I guess. So um, could I send it to them somehow? You can. You just put it in the tube and send it to them. Okay. That's okay. it. Or what I would suggest, David, I don't actually know who the guy is in Windsor, Detroit. I, I know that the Detroit Symphony is one of the best in the world. They must have a good guy around there that can that can do a good job. Um, and I'd be interested to find out if there is somebody. In, in Detroit. In Detroit or Windsor. You never know. I, I don't know if there's anybody in Windsor. Yeah. Uh, you know, because that, that's been a problem for a long time. Yes, I know. It's a well-known problem, actually. Uh, yeah. But yeah, definitely, you can just put them in a tube, send them to Heinel. Make sure you got something to play in the meantime. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got others. Okay, let's do these double stops again. And this time, I don't, I'm not going to shout out what we're doing anymore. It's like you're, you're on your own. Okay, ready, go. comfy. Let's speed it up. Move the bow faster. Okay, ready, go. fifth at the top was awesome is it because it i find the fifth it's like you, if you hit it right away you're good it's great but if you have to finagle around it gets really hard to tune i find it takes me a good three attempts uh, especially with the third finger now let's do one more fun thing with double stops there's been a lot of talk lately from my many students of mine about trying to bow with the hand Okay, and it's a big, it's a big uh, hurdle for a lot of people. So let's try a bit of this. So that's hand, 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 arm, arm. And I'm going to watch your, your hands in the zoom screen so that I can see whether you're doing it with your hands or with your arm. Because that's what's hard about this exercise. Oh, Susan found some Detroit Region bow people. AD bows in Michigan. Yeah, might be good. Might be good. In Southfield, which is a sort of a suburb of Detroit. It's, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. it's, it's yeah. not a bad idea. It'd be worth looking into. I can take. I can make some inquiries too because I know some people down there. Okay, so let's try it with that Boeing. Hand, 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 arm, arm. One, two, three, go.
Okay, that was fun watching you guys like a video game. So, now, first of all, I want to know how you think you did. How about you, David? How did you think you did with that hand? Well, uh, fair to midland. Okay, what I saw from you was actually good movement, but there's still lots of your arm. And that's kind of the normal progression. So, it, but you have very good movement. So I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if just isolating that arm will give you a really good hand because you were moving it a lot. Like you, you were, you were moving it far. Good, a good long sweep. So, and now it was just that the hand was involved too. You know what I mean? Or sorry, yeah. the arm was involved too, but the hand was made moving good. So I don't think it'll take too much. How about you, Lisa? Okay. Hand or arm? I was, can you hear me okay? Um, I was so trying to figure out the notation. That I wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing because I like got lost in there. So. Oh, you got lost? Okay, we'll do it again. I, I just need work with it because, you know, it, it was, I don't know. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a thumbs down for me. <laughs> okay, well, we'll do it again. Lost, you know? <laughs> uh, now, let me tell you what your arm looked like, though. Uh, you had a very small bit of movement of your hand, but it was mostly your arm. It looked kind of like this. See that? Okay, so there's a start, there's a little movement there, but I want you to now exaggerate that, like when you get used to the pattern. Exaggerate that hand, because it is moving a bit, but it's still your arm. Now, how about you, Paul? How do you think you did? Uh, yeah, I, I, I was similar. Like Lisa, I was, I just haven't practiced. I, yeah, I haven't practiced these double stops in a while. So I was okay. really getting a little confused by the fingering and the bow and the getting the right. So I'm not sure to be honest. And neither am I cause you're, I couldn't see your arm. Yeah. I, it was like way down here. I know. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. We'll do it again. Oh, well, that that was intentional. Pattern. Don't tell us that. <laughs> now, how about you, Susan? How do you think you did? Well, when I loosen up my hand to do that, the, the bow kind of does what it wants on, on the strings. All you got to do for that, yeah, all you got to do for that is loosen up on the bow, but put a little bit of this here on it. Just this finger here. Uh, okay. Okay. And when you put that on the bow, now I, 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 was, I was teaching this Scottish guy. His name is Scott, and he's really going to be great. And he was what he was when he was a kid. He played, and he's trying to get back into it, trying to remember. And we were talking about the bow hold because he learned the hoil, you know, the the way you're supposed to do it. And uh, we were talking about this knuckle here. That knuckle there has to be right on top of the bow if possible, because the, if it's not, if it's say over here, then when you go to bear down, it slips. It, it always slips. It will not not slip. And that means it kind of gives you a, like an unsure footing with the bow. So you're, that's why that finger is supposed to go right on top of it. So that when you do bear down on it, it goes right into the stick and there's no loss of force there. And it's a sure footed way to do it. So when you're, and you should loosen up your grip, of course, I talk a lot about that. But if you put a little bit of that on there and the knuckles in the right place, then it'll stop you from wandering so much. Okay, let's try it again. And though you guys that are getting used to the pattern, pretend you know it. Ready, go. looking better just a little tiny bit of attention didn't went to went along the way okay does that sound does that sound like it's doable to practice that's great and then we'll maybe we'll, next time we'll do it starting up <laughs> okay so let's get out the jigs and which one should we do first let's see let's do uh lark of the morning first
and then uh, banish. Did not see Frank Edgley this weekend. He's usually here for the Chris Langer weekend. Um, but I did see Ann McCallum down in uh, in Buffalo when I was there and said that Frank is kind of low these days because he lost his musical compa compatriots. And he's sad. <laughs> I hope he comes to Toronto again soon because we had a great time when he was here. He fit, fit in like a dirty sock. And his son is here now. So he might come down. But he always comes to Chris Lang. I was surprised not to see him. Hmm. Okay, shall we? So Lark in the Morning first. And then Vanish. And let's do them... Uh, Let's do them twice each because they're long. And how fast should we go? Do you think that's a doable start? I think so. Okay. One, two, three, go.
already getting them back. That's good. Can we go a little quicker? Well, I <laughs> don't know. Because, <laughs> you know... I'm okay at that speed. In fact, it was it was really very good actually at that speed. Oh, good! But, um, Since you know, it was so good, your reward is we're going to do it again a little faster. Uh, really, yeah. <clears throat> That's how I reward people <laughs> by making them do it again. And it's good to whenever you have a good go of something, whenever something goes well, you should try to do it again right away. Uh, because if you if you can feel the same way with your hand with your left hand. And if you can hear, like, if it sounds the same, then you've just practiced it right twice. So precious. We don't get that opportunity very much. So whenever it goes good, got to do it again. Right. Except faster. So let's see. Just a little hustle, nothing major. Let's give it a try. One, two, three, go.
Scooby-Doo. Not bad. Third and middle. Well, that's great. There you go. Uh, and that tempo was, just for their, for your records. Let's see. Anybody have a guess? I guess 75. 75. I go 80. 90? 90? 85. 85. Okay. Well, Not that's a nice, comfortable tempo. Yeah. That's a good, day. it's what they call the stately pace. Dum dee day dee day dee day dee, 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 dee. Yep, that's 85. So if you're practicing at 85, it's probably a good bet. And if you wanted to try it fast a couple of times this week, I would put it up to 95. And see what goes wrong. Something's gonna it's gonna go wrong. Don't you know, don't don't worry about that. But it'll give you a little indication of what might go wrong when you go fast. Okay? Very thing, good. The thing that'll go wrong as you speed it up are the rolls. Oh. You know, that's the thing. Yes, Everything else now, is pretty, pretty well on the day. But, uh, you know what I used to do? To, to get rolls into the music, like especially especially hard tunes that, that are hard to get rolls into. And, and it's this little thing that really worked for me. You, you do it two ways. Fast music, slow rolls. So you kind of stop for the rolls. And do them slow. Let me show you what I mean. So, take take part of uh, Banish Misfortune and yeah. do your. I'll show you. Do that. Yeah. Okay. So let's say. Let's see where we got. Okay. <laughs> So you see what I mean there? Now, and that can be, it's helped a lot of people. Yeah. What you want to make sure of when you do that is you get the rhythm of the roll right. And the fact that you're doing the tune in time helps with that. Okay. Now, another really good thing to do when you're practicing rolls is play around with when you're going to do the finger work. So like, for instance, in the Lark in the Morning, so... Uh, <laughs> but you can play around with where you want that that finger work to be slow on the slow. So you, again, you're doing the tune normal speed, and you go. See that, and give yourself time to to do it. So it, I think that'll work for you. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else have any things like that, uh, concerns or comments or complaints about Irish music or people? <laughs> okay, good. Let's get out the, the Scottish, the Earl of Dalhousie. We did do some Scottish music this weekend because Chris Langan was a Highland Piper. Uh, where he was from, uh, in Rush, a uh, little bit north of uh, Dublin, kind of the borderlands. <laughs> And uh, he played in the Rush Pipe Band. It was his first instrument, actually. And so the Chris Langan Weekend always starts off with the Highland Pipes. And this year, it was Ross's son, Nolan, playing the, playing the Highland Pipes to start off the weekend, which I thought was pretty cool. And he did Dan, would you mind sending that one to me? I don't, I'm pretty sure I don't have it. The Earl of The Dallas. Earl? No problem. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. Uh, so that's Paul, and it's the Earl. <laughs> Gonna have to get some more Scottish music, I would say. Like maybe some yeah. Strass Bays. Yay, yay. <laughs> have, have we done any Strass Bays? No. I Not that I remember. Yes, Lisa. I heard to practice this Earl of Dalhousie's. I was listening to Natalie McMaster's recording. Yeah, she was going right into Back of the Change House, which is oh, a yeah. 
Yeah. That's a great tune. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I'm going mm -hmm. to take a look at that because I, I do play it, but I can't remember. I can't remember it. <laughs> so that was my question. Um, like, would that be a good one to go into or is it like too demanding? Or well, something? I'm just going to take a look at it because I can't remember. It's it's in Jerry Hall in two, if that's any help. Oh, that's better. Which one, the orange one? Yeah. Okay. Back of the Change House. What a title, eh? 36. Okay, let's see. It doesn't look too hard. It's a short one. 18th century, oh wow. five seconds <laughs> and uh yeah it'd be a really good one to get it's a very very popular tune so it's a it's a very very good one to have um but anyway let's let's work on the uh work on the earl first what what okay did you get it paul yeah okay good um what's a good tempo for marching air it's slow. Slow? Yeah. Like one, two, yep. one. That's like right. Slow march. Yeah. Very slow march. If I were to play it, I think. <laughs> kind of like that. Okay. Right. Okay. Not yeah. fast, that's for sure. Right. So let's give it a shot. Back of the Change House is another title that would be a perfect 45 second movie of that um, title. Back of the Change just House. One, one quick thing. Uh, I've got it in F. Uh, what key have you got it in? It's in, we're doing it in D. It's originally oh, in yeah, F. D? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I've got but it in F. I know. And it's really <laughs> nice in F. Really nice. But, uh, now, the Natalie recording is in D, and the D is the uh, way more common key for it. Oh, okay. Uh, but I do prefer F. Absolutely. Maybe I'll make Brian do it in F next time. Okay, let's okay. give it a go. I got to do some transposing here. <laughs> okay, you want me to send you the uh, D version there, David? Uh, probably be safe. Well, no, I because I can't get it anyway. I'll just put it on my screen. Up. Oh, okay, put it on the screen then. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. I'm gonna make it bigger. Oh, not that big. Oh, not that big. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, got it. Thank you. No problem. That's okay. The problem. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Okay, let's have a go at her. One, two,
Natalie Head does have good taste. Okay, how's that feeling? How's the Earl? Is he earling? Is he taking care of his subject in a good British fashion? Oh, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Collecting taxes and beating on people. Yep. Okay, um, good. Dan, yep. can you can you uh, send me that one in D? Yep, no problem. And I'll put it in the book here. Yeah, it's good in D. I, I do, I do, like I said, I do prefer it in uh, F, but it's good in D. Uh, David Light. Um, while I'm doing that, I'll tell you this hilarious story about uh, about my phone in the Uber uh, on Saturday night. I uh, I got an Uber home, and it was about 3.30 in the morning when I finally headed home, because they kicked us out of the Transac. And uh, I get in this Uber, and this guy takes me home, and I get in the door, and I, I pass out, wake up in the morning, no phone. And so I'm thinking I left it in the Uber, which is usually fine. Like, it's really, the Uber is great about that. You go on the thing afterwards, you put, lost my phone, the guy comes back and gives it to you. Uh, and uh, it's, I've had, had it happen a couple times. So anyway, so I went on find my phone because my Uber ride hadn't registered yet because it was still still it was three thirty in the morning. So so I would go on and find my phone and it's just down the street, uh, D Dufferin and Davenport. And I'm like, geez, what's the chances that the Uber guy lives there? Like it does, it's it's wild. But you know maybe I'll try. So I hopped in the car and I drive down there. And, and I see on, on Jen's phone, find my phone, it's right in this house. So I go up to the house and I and I, I press the doorbell, nobody comes to the door. And I look at the app and it seems like the phone is around the back of the house. So I walk around the back of the house and there's a guy sitting in a window eating his breakfast and I'm like, hi. And he's like, he's an immigrant guy, very little English. He's like, hello. And I said, I think I left my phone in an Uber. And he said, you need Uber? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I left my phone and he said oh phone oh one moment and he disappeared and he came back a few minutes later and he says no phone on my floor I'm sorry no phone maybe upstairs and I'm like thanks buddy thanks very much and he wasn't the uber driver I didn't recognize him so for some reason he was nice enough to go looking in his house for a phone that definitely wasn't there uh, but anyway so then I went around the front of the house and the guy was at the front door and, and I said, hi, and he said, phone, and I said, yes, and he was another immigrant, very little English, he was like, my wife, and then this absolutely gorgeous 20-something Brazilian girl comes out with my phone, with all the cards still in it, and she was so happy, because what happened was, he accidentally took it from the Uber, uh, thought it was his phone. So I can't believe I got it back. And it's so amazing that, like, everybody was so nice about it. Like, that lady was so happy that I got it back, even though my credit card was there. Like, uh, And uh, that guy that went looking for it, even though there was no hope, he knew the phone wasn't there, but he went looking anyway. It was so nice, you know? Immigrants are such nice people, usually. Yep. It's the ladies that are usually the jerks. Anyway, every, everything goes okay with the Earl. It's not that hard, right? It's pretty easy. It's not a hard tune. Do you want to do it again? Which Let's tune are you talking about? The Earl. Oh, the Earl. Yeah, sure. It's not a hard tune, but let's do it again anyway. Yeah. Maybe you could get some double you stops in it. it yeah, I'll put it up on the screen. Yeah. We're just getting it up yeah. here now. Maybe we can get some double stops into it or some uh, ornaments, like uh, grace notes and stuff like that. Let's see what we can do. Okay. Okay, here we go. A one, two,
that's another double stop you can do in D. It's, it's F sharp and D together. Very nice one. Okay, well that's the Earl. Love him. Great tune. Now, back of the change house. So, I'm good. I have it here. Take a little pic picture of it, send it to you guys. You can throw it up on the uh, screen, that would be a help. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go dig the book out. So. No problem. I'll throw her up. Don't you worry about it. Okay. I think Jennifer's computer might be biting the biscuit. I took it to the guys today because it's just not coming on. And uh, they didn't look too hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> it's only five years old, but it just something started going wrong with the screen. It had these lines across it. And then uh now it won't it won't take a charge, it won't come on at all. We don't really know what's going on with it, but we'll find out. She needs it bad though, that's the thing. Okay. Here we go. And this is back of the change house. Uh, uh, let's go on the same page as Boy's Lament for His Dragon, I think. Right? Oh, great tune. <laughs> My orchestra was playing that tune uh, uh, last week because we got a little gig there. We're, doing, we're, we're playing for a, uh, for a uh, what do you call it? Uh, pipe band having their uh, having their fundraiser and uh, they were doing Boys Lament for his drag. It's a favorite. Okay. Alrighty. Sending the tune. It's off. And I will put it up on my screen as well. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Here she is. Okay, sort of. <laughs> and I'll just make it bigger. It is. Okay. That's all right. There we oh, go. Oh, it's just two lines? It's just two lines. It's a real short one. And it's a it's a very samey type of tune like the 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 uh, there's a lot of repetition so, so and there's short sandwiches yeah sandwich is right so we got a short sandwich oh sorry and then another short sandwich and then a long one and then that's followed by just a long short long short and then we got a similar uh, and the last bar there is short long short long and I think they all end that way. Uh, no, they don't. The this first ending ends that way in the second part, but the second ending does not. Uh, so anyway, that's the hardest part. Now, in the second part, we got mostly the walking rhythm, the long short. And 
and then we got a long sandwich, or the short long, short long. See that? And the second ending is, it's a long sandwich. Oh, sorry. And then the long sandwich. Okay, and that's basically the rhythmic setup. Now, like I always say, try to say, don't sweat the sandwiches too much. We'll try to get them as written as best we can, and then you just play whatever sandwich tastes good. <laughs> In your mouth, anyway. So let's give it a try. Uh, let's, since it's such a short tune, let's take the first part and do it a few times. I'll go slow so we get the sandwiches right. Okay, one, two, three. Now, the second part. Let's take a look at the second part. Let's do the second part with the first ending, and let's do that a few times. So we scale down, and it's all long short. Ready, two, three. Do it again. Ready? Go. One more time to be sure. Now the second ending. Little different. Let's give that a try. Okay? So let's do the whole B part with the second ending this time. Ready? Two, three. screwed it up completely. I did the first one, but I did a really good job of it. Okay, second time through. Ready, go. Okay, you see how that's slightly different. Let's do it again. Ready, second time. the biggest thing I'm trying to get in my head. In the first one it's but in the second one it's <laughs> not that it matters but I like you know with stress phase I always like to get it exactly as written first as best as I can and then whatever I don't worry too much about it but I do think it's important to get the sandwiches right the first time. Now let's try going through both times of that B part. One, two, three. Zoom, you were finished last, Lisa. 
Uh, and, uh, and with Zoom, it's always like that. So I get to actually watch people play the last few notes of whatever we're playing together, which is kind of kind of wild. Anyway, let's, shall we try it from the top? Any questions or problems? Let's do it. Yes, Lisa. I've got a question. In this music, it says DS, and then there's this S thing. It's like you're supposed to go back to the beginning somehow, but I'm kind of confused what you do there. Yeah, it's a uh, that's a good question. They they they, they that's a DS to the, to the coda. You're supposed to go back to the sign and play now, but it's just unclear where they actually want you to end. I think you end on the A part, maybe. Have to see oh, what Andy does. To. Yeah, you pretty well have to. Yeah. Yeah, because they got that extra pickup though there, right here. So I think you end you on the A much part have to end there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's how it goes. But we'll just see what Natalie does. Let's do it. From the top. One, two, three. How's everybody doing with this tune? Back at the change house. How scandalous. I wonder what the change house was in the 1700s, eh? Do you think it was a toll booth? Oh. Like or a bridge or something, maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That's my guess. I don't know. Yeah. And if you and you know, if you were working in that toll, toll booth, you'd get bored and you'd want a little bit of action at the back of the change house, you know? Once in a while. <laughs> Okay, cool. So, and we'll put that with the Earl, um, and uh, I think that'll be great. Let's try one more time before we're before we're done, just to make sure it's in there. Okay, we've got the Google answer there. What's that now? A change house is a staging post where travelers could rest and change their horses. And change their horses. Oh, and also maybe change their partners. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, one more time. Back at the change house. Good tempo. Next time we'll squish it together. Oh, we should talk about reels. Uh, trying to think of a reel to go with the back with the back of the change house. There's the one in Jerry's book here is the boys the lock. <laughs> It's an Irish one. 
first one. Let's see, what would be good? What's a good D tune to go after Back of the Change House? I want to give you something to think about. When... Yeah. Is Jenny Dang the Weaver in D major? Oh, it sure is. Let's do it. Jenny Dang the Weaver. I don't know how you dang a weaver, but she did it, and she did it in the key of D. I think it means that she rejected him. I think it does too. Yeah, she danged that fella. So if, and maybe because he was a weaver, it's not very exciting. He's probably a drooler. Uh, but anyway, so uh, let's do that. So I want you to study uh, 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 that tune that we just mentioned, Jenny Dang the Weaver, because we have done it before. We've done it in the past. Uh, so we can dredge it up again, and we'll put that together, and that'll be great. Now let's do Back of the Change House one more time before we're done. Throw it up. Throw it up. Oh, throw it up, yeah. Blah. Throw it up. Okay. Decent clip, because it's so easy. One, two, three. there Lisa excellent choice okay have we got a plan there for next week I think so and a little bit of work on it we're gonna talk more about this next week so make sure you get some of that in on the double stops all right people I just don't have Jenny dang the weaver I don't have a copy of that so I can look it up on the session though oh no that. don't do that there's so many <laughs> stupid ones I'll send you the good one. <laughs> okay you. see you guys thank you can I get Jenny Dang the Weaver as well? You'll all get Jenny Dang the Weaver. You'll all get it. <laughs> Thank you. See you guys. <laughs>